If you're in the market for an S-Series twin cam or a used twin cam CVO, the Screaming Eagle 110 is what's going to power it. So today, we're going to take a look inside that 110, find out what's different and what you can do with it as far as upgrades. Before we get started today, please be sure to like the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. The Screaming Eagle 110 was introduced in 2007 to replace the Screaming Eagle 103 motor. Now the 103 motor wasn't the same as the production 103 motor that came out in 2009. I should have clarified that in my last video, but I'll have another video coming out comparing the Screaming Eagle 103 to the production version, show you guys the differences there. So what they did with the Screaming Eagle 110 was they took the 96 inch block, they bored the cases out, and this allowed them to put the four inch bore cylinders on it. Now the 110 still shared the same crankshaft and flywheel as the 96, so the stroke was the same as the 96. So from that point, they added the Screaming Eagle heads. The Screaming Eagle heads had larger intake and exhaust valves, larger ports, and larger combustion chambers. Now this gave the 110 slightly more compression at 9.3 to one over the 96 inches 9.2. But when it comes to compression on the 110, it may be a little lacking, and we're gonna get into that later in the video and show you guys some dyno numbers. The 110 was also treated to the Screaming Eagle 255E cam, which had more intake and exhaust duration, overlap, and lift. And for the throttle body, it was the same 46 millimeter unit that came on the 96 inch engine. Everything else was essentially identical to the 96, but with bore, heads, and a cam, power at the crankshaft was good for 89 horsepower and 105 foot-pounds of torque which isn't bad as the later model 110s had horsepower of around 92 and about 105 foot-pounds of torque at the crank. It used to be the only way to get a Screaming Eagle 110 was to buy a CVO. And if you're looking for a used motorcycle with a 110, every CVO after the year 2007 up until the Milwaukee 8 come out is gonna have the Screaming Eagle 110. But that all changed in 2016 when for the first time the Screaming Eagle 110 was actually put into production bikes outside of the CVO series, albeit they were all limited production. But with the introduction of the Lowrider, the Fatboy, and the Softail Slim S, you can now get a Screaming Eagle 110 outside of the CVO line. The 110 motor does leave a lot of power on the table, and that's because of its lack of compression. The 110 engine responds very well to compression, much like the Milwaukee 8s respond very well to cam swaps. So let's take a look at what happens if you up the compression and throw a little higher lift cam in a Screaming Eagle 110. For $999.95, the Stage 3 ups the compression to 10.5 to 1, adding the more aggressive Screaming Eagle 259E cam. This takes the stock rear wheel horsepower of about 80 up to 105 horsepower. Our stock torque from 100 foot-pounds flat up to 110 foot-pounds of torque. That's some huge gains for just upping the compression and changing the cam. Now, if you have a 103 twin cam, you could definitely upgrade it to a 110 with bolt-on cylinders. But the Screaming Eagle 110 has a little special surprise that none of the other twin cams can do. You could bolt on a 117 kit to this motor. So let's take a look and see what the Stage 4 kit can do, taking your 110 and making it a 117 inch twin cam. The Stage 4 kit that takes your 110 to a 117, $2,095.95, adds the 4.125 inch bore cylinders, 9.9 to 1 compression pistons, Screaming Eagle 58 millimeter throttle body, 5.3 gram per second high flow injectors, and the Screaming Eagle 259E cam, which is also in the Stage 3 kit. Now this kit comes in two versions. It comes in the street use kit and the race only kit. The price on the street kit and the price on the race kit are the same. The difference between the two, you don't get the high flow 5.3 gram per second injectors on the street kit. Now on the street kit without the high flow injectors and just using Screaming Eagle mufflers, our base horsepower of about 80 rises to roughly 110 horsepower, and our torque from 100 foot-pounds up to a peak of about 115 foot-pounds of torque. Now, if you're running the race kit with the high-flow injectors and an aftermarket exhaust system, base horsepower goes from 80 to almost 115. Our stock torque of 100 rises to about 120 foot-pounds. Those are some very impressive numbers for the twin cam engine. But if you've already got a stage one done, you've already got your exhaust, your tuning, and your air cleaner, there are some other smaller upgrades you can do to your 110 to get a little bit more power out of it. 
You could just go with the stage two, put a different cam in it, a little more lift and duration, pick up a little bit of horsepower there. They do offer a 58 millimeter throttle body that offers a little bit of an increase on that. Now, the only thing I don't really like about the 58 millimeter throttle body, a lot of us already have an aftermarket air cleaner that we like. And to go to the 58 millimeter throttle body, you have to buy an air cleaner that will actually fit on the 58 millimeter throttle body. The one for the stock throttle body does not fit that 58 millimeter throttle body. So if you do decide to go with the stage four kit, just keep in mind that it does have the 58 millimeter throttle body, and that is gonna require you to purchase an air cleaner that will fit that 58 millimeter throttle body. I mentioned earlier in the video that the 110 shares a lot in common with the 96. And if you're familiar with the 96, you know that motor had compensator issues. In fact, a lot of twin cans end up having a compensator issue at one point or another. It's not a bad idea to go ahead and upgrade your stock compensator, especially with the 110 being a higher performance, higher torque motor than the 96. And if the 96 is already having issues with the compensator, that's gonna create more problems with it being on a, even just a stock 110, especially when you go to start upgrading and building more power out of your 110 engine. If you've had a compensator failure, or you suspect your compensator is fixing to fail, don't go replace it with the stock one. You're gonna have the same issue again. At least upgrade to the Screamin' Eagle heavy duty compensator or find a good quality aftermarket piece. The Screamin' Eagle compensator is actually upgraded to help handle that extra horsepower and torque that those motors produce. The Screamin' Eagle compensator uses heavy duty springs, has an increased travel and improved oiling. And whether you're leaving that bike stock or you're going ahead and modifying it, this is a good upgrade to do for any twin cam, not just the 110. Because the 96 had a lot of failures, the 103's had problems. So if you do have an issue with the compensator, just make sure to change out to that Screaming Eagle or at least a good heavy duty aftermarket unit. And this becomes even more important if you really start putting some power into the bike. Another good upgrade to consider for your 110, or once again, any twin cam really, is to go ahead and check out the Screaming Eagle high volume oil pump. If you have any experience with, a, with the twin cam engines, you know they run hot. So the 110 definitely runs hotter with the added displacement. So if we follow the history of Harley-Davidson engines, it would have seemed likely that the 110 would have became the mass production model to replace the 103. And then the actual 117 would have came from the factory for the CVO models. But we know that didn't pan out that way since in 2017, the M8 came out and replaced the twin cam and the Touring models. It was pretty obvious at that time the twin cam was on its way out. And in 2018, the Milwaukee 8 went from the Touring models into the Softail models, and we lost the Dynas, but they did carry over some of the Dynas into the Softail models with the Milwaukee 8. So if you ride a CVO 110, or you have one of the S-Series twin cams, and you're looking to get a little bit more power out of them, or build them all the way out, Compression is a great place to start with these motors. And one of the best parts about the Twin Cam 110 and increasing compression on these motors is that they already have automatic compression releases installed in them. Because even stock at 9.3 to 1 compression, they're still pretty hard on the starters. And then you go up in that compression to 10 and a half to 1. If it didn't have the automatic compression releases, either A, you'd never get the bike started, or B, you're going to destroy the starter and tear some other things up. That's all I got for you today, guys, on the Screaming Eagle 110. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to stay tuned for next week's video. I had a lot of comments on my Twin Cam 103 video that it didn't come out in 2009. Technically, that is correct, but the 2009 production version wasn't exactly the same as the 2003, and I'm going to go over that next week. So until next week, guys, stay safe, ride smart, and I'll catch you all next week.